Return from whence thou camest. I know fighting a boss that has three phases seems crazy intimidating, scary, and impossible to some people. But a long fight like this has its weaknesses, which is a pretty much free phase one and an easily exploitable trick to use on phase three. I will not be going through all of her moveset because, as you might have noticed, is way too complicated. And there really is no point because you will not go near her anyway. Yes, you heard that right. At first I'm going to explain to you how phase 1 works. And what you're going to do is stay away and wait. Then in phase 2 we're going to be harassing a poor old man. And in phase 3 we're doing the same thing again, which is stay away and wait. Again. In phase 1, Fruity's attack feels super hard to dodge because they're so delayed. But you don't even have to deal with them because you're going to just stay away from her close range. The key is, stay away and wait for her to turn invisible. It's really easy to predict where she will go by looking at the snow trail she leaves behind. She can either jump sideways or behind you. For when she jumps sideways, she will be in the other direction than where the snow is flying towards. And she will jump around half the room's width in one jump. She's pretty easy to spot every time, it just takes a little bit of practice. And for when she jumps behind you, the snow goes up in a straight line. Then you turn around 180 degrees and she will be right there if you keep running straight. You can even see where she lands if you turn around fast enough. Now you can either backstab her or just hit her like that. The backstab is a bit weird, but you can orientate yourself with her head. So directly behind where she is looking towards is the hitbox for her back. Or you could look at her arms, that's also around the same area where you have to stab. After the backstab, you can follow up with a few more hits, but just make sure to build distance again afterwards. Building distance doesn't only make it easier for you to avoid her attacks, it will also bait her to go invisible more frequently. Should you fail to spot her after going invisible, the best thing you can do is run far away and hope for the best. Sometimes you can also do this sliding attack with a grab at the end without going invisible first, so also keep running until she will eventually miss. Lastly, her jump attacks are also easily punishable. When she jumps up, immediately run behind her and try to backstab, but watch out for the ice around her on the floor. More details on this attack later when I explain phase 3. It seems overwhelming to deal with two enemies at the same time, but Frida is pretty passive and leaves you open to deal with Ariandel most of the times. Ariandel has an easy moveset and is really slow, so he's an easy target for you. So you can go and hack and slash away at the poor guy. Shame on you. Ariandel has only four simple attacks. Two of them are attacks while moving. The first one of those two is he walks upright slams three times fairly slowly and then the fourth one is very delayed and the second one is he crawls while smashing he smashes twice and then another time but also delayed it's also important to try going with him into the direction he moves in so you have time to punish him he also has two stationary attacks the first one being breathing fire which is easily punishable by walking behind him you can see the trigger for that attack when he starts holding up the cauldron towards his head and the other one is a big explosion. It's one slam followed by another quick one. Then after a big delay comes the explosion. You can see that one coming because of the two quick successive slams at the beginning. And yeah, make sure to run far away because explosions hurt. Now, Frida can only do three things here. Most of the time she will spam ice. So just keep moving and don't stay in one spot for too long or else the ice explosion will hit you. She can also close range attack you, and this happens when you fail to build distance between her and Ariandel. So I advise you to run away when you feel her coming close and try to separate them again. And lastly, she can heal. You can see that coming when she jumps backwards and becomes invisible. If you're quick enough, you can follow her and hit her once to interrupt. Just try to spot the glowing orb when you try to find her. After you've interrupted her, you should go attend business to Ariandel again, because he's just an easier target than Frida is. Okay, but how do you separate them successfully? At the beginning of phase 2, wait for Ariandel to start and then run either left or right. This will have already built you enough distance to be able to go for a few hits. Now, any time after that, whenever Ariandel is about to move forward with one of his two attacks, try to lure him into a corner. This will get you the most distance to Frida. In the most optimal situation, you will lure him from one corner to the other. So Frida stays behind at the other corner. Make sure to always keep an eye on Frida, so I really, really advise you to lock off. Do not lock on. 
Because Ariandel is so huge and the fact that you have to deal with two enemies at the same time, the shitty Dark Souls camera really doesn't make it easy for you. In phase 3 she is this whirling crazy tornado of attacks and magic and fire and everything that you cannot for the life of you predict. Like what the hell is going on? There is one simple and most importantly super duper safe strategy you can use for her phase 3. Stay away and backstab her. It might not seem very heroic or fair to use such a scaredy cat strategy. But honestly, Fruita deserves no less because she's a bitch. I will not explain all of her attacks, just the most important ones. Because the trick here is, build distance, wait for her to do one of these specific attacks, and then backstab, rinse, and repeat. Always at the beginning, she will jump and land behind you with a black flame attack. As soon as you jumped up, sprint towards her where she left off and you will find yourself behind her. You don't even need to roll, but you can if you want to be safe. After she pulled her weapon back like this, you can backstab her. Just like in phase 1, you can punish a couple times after every backstab. But make sure to build up distance quickly again, or else she will catch you in one of her crazy combos. Another attack is, she flies upwards and slams you with an ice attack. And this one has two variations. She either casts ice in front of her only in a cone shape, which is safe to backstab directly. Or she will cast ice around her in a smaller circular shape instead of a cone, which means you need to run further behind her because if you walk into it, the ice will hit you. This might take a few attempts and you won't get it straight away, but I promise you it's worth it if you keep trying. The signs to see which attacks are coming also have different variations. The most common one is she will cast any ice attack and then jump. She will not always follow these up, but in most cases she will. To punish, do the same thing you did for the other jump, which is run behind her and backstab. Also, she doesn't always do it, but sometimes she twirled before the jump, which is an extra cue for you. Another punishable attack is she dashes towards you and then rotates twice. You can see this one coming because the top of the scythe flashes up and then she starts dashing towards you. This one is punishable with a bit of practice, but not as optimal as the jump attacks. To punish, roll into her when she is mid-spin and then attack. This attack here is not very punishable, but I find it hard to dodge. She drags her scythe across the ground, leaving behind the trail of ice. This one doesn't have a good visual trigger, but the good thing is the attack doesn't deal damage at first. So if you roll to the side quickly to avoid the delayed explosion, you'll be fine. This here is a good example. I keep running away from her, but she keeps spamming attacks I don't want to punish. So just stay patient and keep running away and wait for the right moment. Speaking of running away, sometimes she will do this and dash after you for ages, but just keep running. Don't give up, stay patient. And last but not least, she can go invisible. She'll jump three times while casting ice and then try to do her signature deadly grab attack. Yeah, that one. For this one, activate your supernatural eye senses and check the direction she jumped to. Then repeat that three times. Just make sure to roll every time she casts the ice. After she's done, you can get a backstab here, but let me tell you, the hitbox is really weird. So instead of her actual back, you have to target her side, basically at a 90 degree angle to her back. This is likely because she twists her upper body, but technically if she were to stand in an idle position, her back would be right there, where her arm is now. Um, spaghetti code, you know. If you can't get the backstab, which, to be honest, takes a little while to get used to, you can just attack her normally instead. And now, last but not least, I'm gonna give you a couple equipment tips. Firstly, you can use the chill bite ring to decrease the buildup of the frostbite. Another really good ring is the hornet ring. It increases critical, aka backstab damage. You can get that ring after beating Champion Gundir, and it'll be close to the dark firelink shrine. I really hope this video helped you, you know, if it did, please leave me a like and a comment and tell me about how you feel. And also, please, please, please remember to subscribe to my channel, it would mean the world to me. Also, watch me live on Twitch almost every day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Okay, bye!